What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to deploy your Node.js application that's written in TypeScript to the platform known as Heroku. Now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've always called it Heroku. And by always called it Heroku, I mean in the last two months, because honestly, before that, I've never used this platform. But a lot of the people that sub to this channel have asked me to show you how to do it to Heroku. So this is going to be the first deploy video in March. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of deploys to AWS, to Firebase, etc. Any of the big platforms we're going to be taking a look at. But I'm starting with Heroku because this one was brand new to me and I had a lot of fun doing it. Now, while testing Heroku, there were a couple limitations that I discovered, and that depends on the pricing plan that you go with. If you have the free plan, like the one that I'm going to show you here, there are some limitations. For example, you won't be able to get a static IP or a static range of IPs unless you have the Enterprise Edition. This matters because when you're using a tool like Mongo Atlas or some other cloud service that requires you to whitelist your API, you won't be able to do that unless you actually pay for the platform. So the example I'm gonna be showing you today is just going to be a very basic API that basically just returns a health check, nothing crazy. All that being said, if you like what you see here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Or if you're feeling super generous, you can buy me a coffee. All right, guys, let's get into it. So you'll see I have a couple of tabs open here. This first one is the Heroku dashboard. This is where your applications are gonna show up. I'm gonna go ahead and click the second tab here, and this is the uh, Heroku CLI installation. So I'm gonna have a link to this page down in the description, but for Windows, I'm gonna click the 64-bit installer. And what this program is going to be doing is installing the Heroku CLI or command line interface. I'm not sure if you can actually upload your files in a zip package to Heroku or not, but this is the recommended way to do it. So I just followed these basic instructions and went from there. Most of the platforms like Amazon, Heroku, DigitalOcean, I'm pretty sure they all have their own form of CLI if I'm not mistaken. So anytime there is a CLI associated with some sort of cloud service you want to use, it's highly recommended to use their command line interface. And so the next tab that I have open here is getting started with Heroku on Node.js. And this is going to be the page I'm going to be referencing my commands from. For example, you can see at the top there that Heroku create, that's actually going to create the app through the command line interface onto the website for you. So it will appear in your dashboard. So I'm going to take you through all these steps and show you how to configure your project. So you can see here, I have my package.json file set up pretty basically. Uh, my npm start script is just me calling my build slash server.js after I compile it with TypeScript. So I'm actually going to run Nodemon right now and just show you the, how this basic project works. It's just one API endpoint, but I'm gonna show it to you locally and then show it to you deployed on Heroku. And you can see here when I go to my localhost 1337, and I do a forward slash ping, it just returns my hello world. So my API is working correctly. So for the first step of configuration for getting an API to work on Heroku, there is a special environment variable that you're gonna have to use, and that's going to be the port. So you can see here in my config.ts file, I have my port variable declared as my process.env.port or the port one through three seven. The reason that I have this process environment variable port declared here is because Heroku is going to try to inject its own port into your application. That way you don't have to specify a port when you actually use the domain name. If you do not declare your port like this, Heroku will not be able to bind its port to the port that you're looking for and your app is going to consistently crash. So make sure that you're declaring your port like this. And then when I head over to my server.ts file, you can see here that I'm using my config.server.port and that is how I'm declaring it in my listen function. So let's go back to the package JSON file. The next thing that we have to take into account is that I'm using TypeScript to write this project. Therefore, I need to compile it into JavaScript before I can run it. Now, Heroku doesn't run TypeScript. It wants to run JavaScript. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our scripts section and add something called a post install command. And inside of that, we're going to call TSC. What this is going to do is once our package is deployed to Heroku, it's actually going to run the TSC command, the TypeScript command, and then compile our project for us online. So we don't actually have to upload our build or anything like that. We can keep them commented out in our git ignore file. So you can see on the left side, the build and the node modules folder are grayed out. And that's because they're not part of this repository. Next, we can briefly look at our tsconfig.json. This is just a normal tsconfig, and all I've added is the include section to compile my source folder and an out directory to designate my build folder. Nice and simple. So the project is almost completely configured. There's not a lot that goes into it. 
That being said, there is one more file that's special to Heroku that we need, and that's called a proc file. So we're gonna declare this in our root directory, and we're gonna spell it with a capital P. And inside of our proc file, we're just gonna basically declare one thing, and that's what kind of server this is. And how we're gonna do that is declare our worker with a colon, and then give it our starting command, which is npm start. There are a lot of configuration options you can throw inside of this proc file, but this is the only one we need that's relevant to our project. So it should be noted that in order to get your project deployed with the Heroku CLI, you have to actually have the Git repository initialized. So if I type Git status here, you can see that I do have a working Git branch going and everything seems to be fine. But if you haven't committed your project yet, make sure to do that. Next, I'm gonna type in Heroku dash dash version just to make sure the CLI is working. And you can see that a nice version pops up for me here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this and type Heroku login. What this is gonna do is prompt me to bring up a browser and then log in. And then once I've logged in on the browser, I'll be logged in inside of the CLI. You have to be logged in to do any sort of project creation. So go ahead and log in and I'll meet you right after you're done. The last thing I'm gonna do once I return to the project is actually change my project name because I already have one inside of Heroku that has that old name and I don't want there to be conflicting projects. Now that that's done, I can go ahead and commit my change to Git. And once that's committed, I can get ready to set up my project on Heroku. Our next step is actually gonna to be to type in Heroku create according to the documentation. And what that's gonna do is create a new project with this package JSON online inside of our dashboard. You can see once it creates the app, our app now has a brand new link and it also has a Git repository assigned to it. Now, in order to deploy code to Heroku, you have to do something called a Git push and then add Heroku and then whatever your main branch is. Mine happens to be main. I haven't tested this with master, but I'm pretty sure it's just the name of your branch. Once you do this, you're gonna see a bunch of logs where the Heroku application is coming online. So you just have to wait a little bit before we make our next steps. You can see that it executes my TSC in my post install steps. And just like that, the application is deployed. Now, if you wanna check the logging for your application to make sure everything's working properly, there's a command for that. All you have to do is type in Heroku logs, but if you wanna tail them in live, just do Heroku logs dash dash tail or dash T. Once we do that, we can see that everything seems to have gone well and that we get our servers running on port and you'll see that it's not 1337, it's the port Heroku has assigned. So if I actually go to the browser and I paste in the address that it gave me inside of my console and do a forward slash ping, you can see that I get my hello world. So our initial setup has worked and our application is now deployed to Heroku. So my API is actually here running in the real world. This is pretty awesome. Now let's go back to our project and let's pretend that I wanted to just refresh this build. I wanted to run the build again, but I didn't have anything new to commit. Let's see what happens. When I do my git push Heroku main, it says everything is up to date. So it's actually expecting me to make a change in git before I can refresh my project or redeploy it. So if you want to redeploy it without committing something new to git, all you have to do is send git an empty commit. And how you do that is you type in git commit, and then you do a dash dash allow dash empty. Then you give it a commit message. You can say anything you want. And once you do that, then you can use the git push Heroku main command and actually redeploy your project by faking a git commit this way. You can see inside the console, it's deploying again. And then when this is done, you can tail the logs and you can see that process a little bit more. So if I go back to my browser and then I type in my application again, you can see that the logs pop up again and everything seems to be working just fine. So that's pretty much all you need to do to deploy a basic Node.js TypeScript application to Heroku. In my case, I use an API using Express. As I said before, if you have more complicated integrations where you're using something like Mongo, or MySQL, or some sort of cloud service that needs your IP whitelisted, you have to upgrade to a version that allows you a static IP range. There's no way around it. As I mentioned before, this was my first time using Heroku and I found it pretty easy actually. The CLI was pretty informative. The hardest part for me was figuring out how to configure my proc file as I found the documentation on that limited. That being said, I now have a working API. So all in all, it was pretty easy. Thanks so much for tuning back in guys. I really appreciate it. 
If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. And if you're feeling real generous, you can buy me a coffee to help me produce more videos for you. All right, guys, take it easy.